ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له لا شريك له في ربوبيته وألوهيته وأسمائه وصفاته وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى أزواجه الطاهرات أمهات المؤمنين وعلى خلفاء الراشدين وعلى أصحابه أجمعين وعلى كل من اتبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين قال الله عز وجل في القرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويكفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار أما بعد All praises are for Allah سبحانه وتعالى We praise Him, we thank Him, we glorify Him We seek His help and aid and we ask Allah to forgive us We ask Allah to protect us we, we ask Allah to keep us rightly guided. We seek refuge in Allah from the evils of our own selves and from the sins that we commit. Indeed, whoever Allah guides, there is none who can lead astray. And whoever He causes to go astray, there is none who can guide. I testify that there is none deserves to be worshipped except Allah. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and messenger. Verily, the best of speech is the book of Allah. The best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of religious matters are those that are innovated. And every religious innovation is a bid'ah. And every bid'ah is a misguidance. And every misguidance will be in the fire of hell. May Allah protect all of us from the fire of hell. Ameen, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Ibad Allah. O Muslims. Alhamdulillah, by the infinite mercy and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have able to journey the blessed month of Ramadan. We have able to journey the blessed month of Ramadan all the way to the last third of the month. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us, has given us life to reach this far. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us alive so that we could see the end of it also. So it seems like we are just preparing for Ramadan. It seems like we are just planning and preparing and receiving it and getting ready for it. And alhamdulillah, we have already completed half of it. So it's time to analyze yourselves. It's time to do self muhasaba. Have you done enough? Have you achieved the maximum out of the, the first half of Ramadan. However, if you have not, we still have time. Allah has blessed us with some more time. If half of Ramadan has gone, what's remaining is still an opportunity for us to seek the blessed night of Laylatul Qadr. The majestic night, the one night that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed this ummah with. Inshallah, we are approaching the best 10 days and nights. Best 10 days and nights of this blessed month of Ramadan. So do not waste any moment of it. Do not squander it. 
Do not waste time. Try to maximize these last 10 days and 10 nights of Ramadan. So although a believer can certainly engage in worship and remembering Allah any time of the year, there are specific times and places that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with, has deposits of blessings and barakah in them. And one of these times, and Allah has multiplied blessings in them. And one of, of the greatest of opportunity one of these times is the night of Laylatul Qadr. The night of Laylatul Qadr. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man kama Ramadan, imanan wahtisaban, gufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambi. That whoever, spe whoever spends the night of Ramadan with iman, faith, belief, conviction that you believe in Allah, wa ihtisaban, hoping for the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he will be forgiven all his sins. And there is another narration from Aisha radiallahu anha, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the mother of the believers. She said that when the last ten nights began, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kept awake at night for prayer and devotion and awake his family and awake his family and prepared himself to absorb the salah to absorb with more vigor with more vitality so that's the messenger of Allah that's the prophet of Allah and he was the best he in Ramadan he he had the best version of himself and especially the last 10 days and 10 nights Specifically, the ten nights of Ramadan. And that's the messenger of Allah. So what about us, O Muslims? We have, to put the, we have to put on the best version of ourselves as well. To capitalize on these ten nights. We don't know if Allah will bless us. This might be the last Laylatul Qadr. This might be the last Ramadan that we are here on this earth. So we have to capitalize. Think about those who are not here. And then this will motivate you. This will motivate you to capitalize just 10 more nights, 10 more days. So, O Muslims, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, Man kama laylatul qadri, imanan wahtisaban, gufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambi. That whoever stands in worship in Laylatul Qadr, whoever stands in, in worship in Laylatul Qadr, Iman with perfect faith and ihtisab, hoping for the reward from Allah, Allah will forgive him all his sins. So these are opportunities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with to still earn the Jannah that He has prepared for us. So if you have been neglectful, you were in ghafla. You were heedless. Before Ramadan, you were distance away from Allah. Here is an opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving me and you to earn the paradise. It's easy. We have to make the effort. And then, in another narration, Anas ibn Malik radiallahu an, he narrated that Ramadan approached. So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, In the shahr, that this month has come to you. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the beginning of Ramadan, he said, this month has come to you. And in it, there is a night that is better than a thousand months. Whoever is deprived of it is deprived of all goodness. And no one is deprived of its goodness except one who is truly a deprived. Meaning that one who is a loser. One who is a loser that they will not make the effort to get this blessing. So, O Muslims, how was the Prophet wasallam in these nights? in these last 10 nights as we are approaching. How was he like? When it comes to the last 10 days in Ramadan, 
The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to have his special agenda. His special agenda. And each and every one of us should have this special program, schedule that we will work with. Everything you do, you should have a plan. You plan before Ramadan. So now we're approaching the last 10 nights. You should have a plan as well. Aisha radiallahu anha mentioned that during the last 10 days of Ramadan, Kana Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam idha dakhal al-ashru shadda mi'dharahu wa ahya laylahu wa ayqadha ahlahu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when the last 10 days of Ramadan came that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he would stay up at night wake up his family and tighten his izar his lower garment and it is also narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to blend the first 20 days of Ramadan with prayer and sleep but when the last 10 days arrived he would prepare himself and tighten up his izar meaning that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would go into a different mode the best version of himself he was the messenger of Allah guaranteed paradise and yet he was like this in worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what about us O Muslims it's an opportunity for us to save ourselves from the hellfire to save ourselves from the hellfire and to earn the Jannah the everlasting paradise so we ask the brothers to come up closer inshallah brothers are out there Come up closer, inshallah. Make room for your brothers. Jazakumullahu khair. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to single out these nights for worship and performance of good deeds more than any other nights. Why? Because in these nights, there is one night, one majestic night hidden within these ten nights that is worth more than a thousand months. Now, what are some of the virtues and significance of, the, of, this, of this night? Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr has also been described as a gift to this ummah. The ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the Muatta of Imam Malik rahimahullah, there is a hadith that states that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was shown the lifespans of the people before him or what Allah willed of that and it was as if the lifespan of the people of his ummah ha had become too short for them to be able to do as many good deeds as those before them so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him Laylatul Qadr a gift to this ummah which is better than a thousand months so one of the virtues and significance of Laylatul Qadr is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave this ummah one night of worship in, 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 in ibadah. One night of worship and ibadah, which is equivalent to more than a lifetime of worship. Subhanallah. Hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, A'maru ummati ma bayna sittina wa sab'een wa aqalluhum yazidu thalik that the lifespan of my ummah is between 60 and 70 years and just a few of them exceeded that so Laylatul Qadr 83 years more than what some of us will live to see so mo most of us may not live this long and even if we do there is no guarantee that we can attain this word of goodness which is present on the best night of the entire year. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us more opportunities, making it easy for us to gain the Jannah, making it easy for us to save ourselves from the hellfire. Isn't that our goal? Isn't that our goal, my brothers and sisters? So that when all of this is over, that we will enter the Jannah that Allah has prepared for us. So if you are heedless, as I mentioned, if you are distant from Allah, this is an opportunity, one night 
one night. But in order for you to, to, to seek that night, to earn that night, you have to, you have to search for it. And we will come to that, inshallah. So Laylatul Qadr, the night of decree, is the most virtuous night of the entire year. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us an entire surah. Surah, an entire surah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Inna anzalnahu fi Laylatul Qadr. That indeed we sent down the Quran during the night of decree, the night of power, the night of decree. And what can make you know what the night of decree is? Laylatul Qadr khayru min alfi shahr. That it is the night of decree is better than a thousand months. Tanazzul al-malaikatu wa ruhu fiha bi-idhni rabbihim min kulli amr. That the angels and Jibreel alayhi salam descended therein by the permission of their Lord for every matter. Salamun hi hatta matulai al-fajr. Peace all throughout that night. There is peace and goodness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his believing slaves until the appearance of dawn, until fajr. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also told us in another surah, Surah Al-Dukhan, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatim mubaraka. Indeed, we sent down the Quran on a blessed night. Fiha yufraku kullu amurin hakim. On that night is made distinct every precise matter. Amram min indina. Every matter from us. Inna kunna mursaleen. Rahmatam mir rabbik. Indeed, we have always been sending messages and messengers as mercy from your Lord. Inna hu huwa sami'ul alim. And indeed, Allah azza wa jal is all hearing and all-knowing. So Muslims, this is a night that we do not want to miss out on, that we have to capitalize bi-idhnillah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fa astaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim. إن الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه رب إشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أما بعد O Muslims When is Laylatul Qadr? If someone to ask you When is this Laylatul Qadr? Many Muslims throughout year after year they only search for Laylatul Qadr in one night of the year in the 27th night of Ramadan, year after year, they only observe ibadah and worship and exhort themselves only one night in the year. So the exact date of the night is not known. Prophet said to his companions, I came to inform you. He came out to inform them about the night of Laylatul Qadr, but found so and so arguing. And as such, as a result, the knowledge of the night was lifted from me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took away the knowledge. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, in many narrations to seek Laylatul Qadr on one of the last ten nights in Ramadan, specifically the odd nights within the last ten nights. As he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Taharraw Laylatul Qadr fil witr min al-ashr al-awakhir min ramadan that seek Laylatul Qadr in the odd nights of the last 10 nights of Ramadan this means the 21st night or the 23rd night or the 25th night or the 27th night or the 29th night so these are the nights that we have to exhort ourselves and it is better that if you seek it in the entire last 10 nights in the month of Ramadan. Aisha radiallahu anha and narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Taharraw Laylatul Qadr fil Ashar al Awakhir min Ramadan. 
that look for Laylatul Qadr in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. So, there was another narration that Salim reported on the authority of his father that a person saw Laylatul Qadr on the 27th of Ramadan. Thereupon, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I see that your dreams agree regarding the last 10 nights of Ramadan. So seek it on an odd number of these 10 nights. And Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma reported that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Seek Laylatul Qadr in the last 10 nights. If one among you shows slackness and weakness in the earlier part of the month of Ramadan, it should not be allowed to, pre to prevail upon him in the last week. So, O oh Muslims, you cannot allow yourself to get burnt out. You cannot your allow yourself to be tired and complacent and just slacking off in these last 10 nights. You cannot get tired. Remember that the best is yet to come. It is reported that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Actually, Abu Sa'id in Al Khudri, radiallahu an, he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam did i'tikaf during the middle ten days in a Turkish tent in which a mat was placed. He said, so he took the mat in his hand and put it at the side of the tent, and then he raised his head to speak to the people, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So they came closer to him. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, I did i'tikaf during the first 10 days seeking this night. Then I did i'tikaf during the middle 10 days. And then Jibreel Alayhi Salam came to me and told me that it is the last 10 days. So whoever among you wants to do i'tikaf, let him do so. So the people did i'tikaf with him the last 10 days of Ramadan. So they did i'tikaf with him, and he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I was shown an odd-numbered night, in the morning of which I was prostrating in mud and water. And then in the morning of the 21st, he got up to pray Salatul Subh, Salatul Fajr, and it was raining, and the roof of the masjid leaked, and there was mud and water. And he came out when he had finished praying, and there was mud and water on his forehead and nose, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that was the morning of the 21st, one of the last 10 nights, one of the last, one of the odd nights. So, O Muslims, there is hikmah, there is wisdom behind us not knowing the specific night because it gives us opportunity to engage in extra ibadah extra worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine if one specific night was known, then we will only worship Allah uh, only on that one night, and then we will slack off on the other nights. So there it's a wisdom, it's a, a hikmah, that we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the nights. So O Muslims, what are some recommended things that we should do during this night? Aisha radiallahu anha reported, I asked the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Messenger of Allah, if I catch Laylatul Qadr, what should I, what should I say? And then he taught her, her this dua, that you should say, Allahumma inna ka'afoon, tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anni. That, O oh Allah, you are most forgiving. You love to forgive, so forgive me. This is a beautiful dua that we should memorize it, we should learn it. So what are some of the other things we should do? We worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this night. Extra salawat, extra prayers, dua, heartfelt dua. Cry out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Glorify Him. Make adhkar. Seek forgiveness. I'tikaf. Also in the masjid. Pray tahajjud. Recite Quran. More dua. More Quran recitation. And repeat all of this again over and over and over. As if this is your last Ramadan. As if this is your last Laylatul Qadr. 
that you will not catch another one next year. So, oh Muslims, we have to capitalize. So there is Ibn Jawzi, rahimahullah, he said, when the racehorse knows that it is nearing the end of the track, it exerts all its efforts to reach its final destination, the final goal. For verily, deeds are judged by their conclusion. So my advice to each and every one of us is that we cannot allow ourselves to get born out. And we cannot be complacent and thinking that we have achieved enough in Ramadan and then we slack off for the rest of the month. So some of the signs of Laylatul Qadr is that the force of them is that Laylatul Qadr is a peaceful and tranquil night. It is a quiet night and it's said that, that there will not be any barking of dogs or, or, or the song of rooster. Secondly, the second sign is that Laylatul Qadr, that the people experience a pleasant and a nice breeze blowing. Thirdly, that there will be rain. That this is one of the signs of Laylatul Qadr, that during the night there will be rain, either light rain or there will be some rain. And fourthly, when the sun, when the sun rises on the following morning, the disk of the sun is seen without strong rays, without any rays. So you see the sun like a clear disk. So, O Muslims, we pray that we that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to witness Laylatul Qadr. Allahumma balligna Laylatul Qadr. Allahumma balligna Laylatul Qadr. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us steadfast. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to forgive all our sins and to grant us the Jannah that He has prepared for us. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, wa fil akhirati hasana, wa qina dhaban nara. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-jannata wa ma qurraba ilayha min qawlin wa amal, wa na'udhu bika min al-nara, wa ma qurraba ilayha min qawlin wa amal, wa nas'aluka al-khayr, ma sa'alaka abduka Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Wa na'udhu bika min ash-shawri masta'adhaka minhu abduka Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allahumma ya maqallib al-qulub thabit qulubana ala dinik Allahumma ya masarrif al-qulub sarrif qulubana ala ta'atik Ya hayu ya qayyum Wa bi rahmatika nastaghith Aslih lana sha'nana kullah Wa la taqilna ila anfusina turafat a'in Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Wa aqimu as-salah